So it is my absolute joy to welcome Mac for his session this morning. We're going to be talking about sales, but Mac is a fantastic coach, mentor, He's an author, he's an internationally recognised uh, uh, coach and has various awards. Too long for me to list in this intro. Go read the bio in your intro welcome information. Um, he's, he's fantastic at getting to the point and getting to the heart of what we all need to have successful businesses, to have really exciting fun with our clients and to thrive at doing what we are doing. And so I am um, really excited to hear what you're going to share with us today. Um, for those who are here, if you want to share comments in the chat, Rhea and I will keep an eye on the chat comments as we go through and um, and we'll we'll field Q&A at the end. So if you can um, stay on mute while we're sharing, while Max sharing his content, and then we will have a time of conversation, discussion, questions when we come to the last sort of 10, 15 minutes or so of this hour together. So, Mac, I'm going to hand over to you. I will, um, I, I will let um, it, Yes, let you share what it is you're going to say, but perhaps if you want to share a little bit of what you've been up to and um, what's going on for you for this coaching week. Superb. Thank you very much, Nikki. And before I begin, I want to say thank you to the whole team, Nikki, uh, to David and to the whole team over there that have made and Dawn, uh, Rhea. I know in the behind the scenes, there's a whole team and people putting things together to make this a great, great week for everyone. So for all those who have tuned in uh, internationally and nationally, uh, I want to say thank you for being here. Obviously, there's a lot of things you, we could be doing right now, but we've decided to commune and be here together and learn and grow as coaches and consultants. So it's fantastic. So Nikki, thank you. So should, I've got some slides. Shall I bring my slides up and begin teaching? That'd be fantastic. Yes, please. Excellent. Hopefully you've all got right. hosting, um, co-hosting. I have. Questions. I have. So I wanted to thank you all, first of all, for putting this on. And um, we are living in uh, very, very extraordinary times right now. And hence the reason why we need amazing coaches. Ah, now I wanted to know whether this was just me. When Max started screen sharing his Zoom phrase, this is a, hopefully he will be back with us in any, any second, just bear with us. Um, this was a bug that I had on my laptop end of last year. There was an, a Zoom update and for about two months, every time I hit screen share, it froze my Zoom and kicked me out. So hopefully he will be back with us in a second. Um, but how to authentically attract and close a flood of high paying high paying clients as a teaser as a teaser first slide we are definitely all need, need that whilst we are waiting for mac to reconnect who is just going to have to rejoin the meeting i think to get the uh, zoom re reworking again have a think about what it is that perhaps is the challenge when it comes to selling coaching what is it that's a challenge for you? Maybe if you want to share a couple of thoughts in the chat box, that would be a, perhaps um, a nice thing to think about. But if we're here to think about how do we close our perfect clients, how do we get to our clients to be on board as paying clients? Because um, whilst coaching is great fun, it, for most of us, it needs to pay the bills as well as, uh, as well as keep us entertained. So what are the challenges that you face when it comes to selling and selling authentically? Um, and getting some and getting the clients you want on board and it might be a good time to think about if you have got any particular questions that you want to ask around selling and particularly selling high paying uh, sessions for high paying clients uh, what are the sessions uh, what are the questions that you hope are going to be answered in this session today so we'll see who wants to uh, share something in the chat so uh, Ah, uh, yes. Thanks, Colette, for feeding back that freezing happened on screen share a couple of times. It's it's an old bug. So if people haven't necessarily got the most up to date version of Zoom, as I say, I had it for about three months until I finally got an update that fixed the bug. Um, <clears throat> usually people are re able to rejoin quite quickly. Um, but attracting and closing high paying clients, what are the challenges? Oh, that's an interesting view. So Emma has shared the richer people are, the more discounts they want. That is an interesting observation. Um, 
I have to say I have a different experience of that but if it's interesting if in your niche that's the experience you're having that that um, maybe that's how they got rich was asking for discounts and not paying full price for things but it's interesting isn't it if the first thing that somebody says is what's the what discount can you offer me how do we handle those um question from Nadia understanding about the so-called idea of uh, ideal client profile well, that's a, that's going to be a wonderful bit. There are some of the sessions that are going to talk about that. So keep an eye on the um, profiles for the coming sessions. Um, my very short answer, which um, just while we're waiting for Mac to reconnect, um, is think about what is an ideal client for you? Because the profile of a perfect client will be different for every single coach. There is no one profile fits all. Otherwise, we would all be coaching identical humans. And we know that humans are unique. And all of us like to work in different areas. Um, and certainly over my first couple of years of coaching, when you're first starting out, I think there's a tendency to say yes to everybody because you just want to fill the order book. And then, of course, over time, you um, over time, you become um, more discerning. So you get to know who do you like working with? Who do you less like working with? Who, if you could only spend every hour of every day working with one client, one type of client, who would that be? And the profile of that person or group of people is going to be different for each of you. So maybe think about for you, who do you love working with? What are the types of coaching sessions that really, really excite you? And which are the ones you go, oh, it's going on one of those today. And then you can start to hone in what is your ideal client profile. So, uh, Welcome back, Mac. We've got some. We've got the challenge of the Zoom bug that that causes Zoom to freeze when people hit the screen share button. It's a known bug. If if some of the older versions. Of oh, Zoom really? It. So, um, so it was as soon as you hit screen share, you froze on us. So, what I've had them doing while you've been reconnecting, I've just get, been getting them to think about what are the challenges they have around um, attracting and closing their perfect clients. Yeah. Um, and uh, a couple of people have been sharing. Um, so one person had an observation that with her group and a few people have, have recognised it, that the richer people are, the more discount they want. Um, and then uh, Nadia had asked the question about understanding what is the so-called ideal client profile. So we were just having a bit of, chat, of a chat about that. Um, and then Julie's commented about qualifying clients who want to do the work, who actually want to do the work as opposed to just have a nice chat. Um, so those those that was the, that's the little summary of the chat we were having um, while, awesome. whilst uh, Zoom was inviting you back into the meeting. So uh, um, we've had, we, we, we stayed well, on topic for you. <laughs> well, thank you very much there, Nikki. I really appreciate that. Thank you for holding the, the fort there. It's very strange because as I try to get back in, my computer has crashed. So I'm coming through my mobile. So I, I've got some amazing slides to share, but I can't share the slides. I'm just going to teach. And as a coach, we got to go on. No matter what, as a trainer, as a speaker, we got to go on. So I'm going to um, teach from here. And I want to say again, thank you for uh, bearing with us here. It's not an ideal situation. And um, so what I want to say is this. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks for that. So we are talking about how to authentically attract and close a flood of high paying clients. Now, one of the biggest challenges, and help me out here, Nikki, as well, is for a lot of are for a lot of coaches and consultants, the big, one of the biggest challenges they have is one, identifying and closing clients. Because there's nothing worse than training, getting yourself prepared, doing something you're passionate about or something you believe it's on purpose for you, and then not making money from it. That is a hard thing because you may then quit as a coach and then go and do something else that is less passionate for you or less purposeful and, and gives you less fulfillment. So what I want to do today in this um, talk time we have together is to talk through some strategies that we've taught our clients over the years to help them to grow and scale their coaching practices so they enjoy what they do. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you, Colette. And um, so put into the chat box for me, please, for... How many of you here are coaches already? How many of you are considering becoming a coach? So if you're a coach already, type in C or C for coach and B for becoming. C for coach or B for becoming. So I can see uh, Nikki, Laura, Asta, Rosaline, Dave. Oh, David, Fung, 
uh, Ross, Colette, Alina, Ella, Alina, Raja. So we've got a, a mix, Most uh, Nick, mostly our coaches already. And so what I'm going to be sharing with you is going to work in both respects. When I say becoming, Mark, thank you. These people are obviously trained or training to become a coach. And as I said, one of the biggest challenges is identifying the right clients and then closing those clients. So I want to go through two specific models for you or processes that we use with our clients to help them to scale and grow. One of those, I'm going to come from a marketing perspective, which is essential. It's very, very important. And then the other one, I'm going to come from a sales perspective. Now, marketing and sales obviously work hand in hand. We do marketing. Why? Because it's there to attract the right type of clients that we want to speak with, we want to help and we know can help. And most importantly, have the money to pay for our services. And the other side is the sales, where we need to know how to close, for a follow a process so we can create consistent sales. So I'm going to go through that in a short while with you, because we know one of the biggest challenges for most coaches is attracting the right clients and closing those clients and making consistent income. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Matt Catram. Thank you for the introduction, Nikki. And for the past 18 years, I've been running my training and coaching education company, serving small business owners, helping them to grow and scale. And typically, those who are in our one-year program scale their business typically by at least 100% or more by using the processes that we teach. And I'm going to share some of them with you in a moment, which you are going to love. And so again, thank you. Uh, but, and also, um, if you wanted my background, I'm an author of four best-selling books, all available on Amazon, um, a mix of personal development books, business development books, and wealth creation books as well. Um, I've had the pleasure in the last 18 years to train over 200,000 people in over 50 countries around the world to grow themselves and grow their business and grow their wealth. And my niche, particular niche that I work with, are coaches, consultants, service-based businesses who want to make more money through their business. I've had the pleasure to share the stage with people like Robert Kiyosaki, Anthony Robbins, uh, who else? Les Brown, Nick Vichick, no arms, no legs. And I have had some amazing slides to show you. I can't show you those slides because of the crash on the computer and the way Zoom, I don't know, knocked me out. No excuses, coaches go on. So that's a little bit about me and my background. Um, but I, I, I say all that because it sounds so wonderful that I've done all this, but there was a time in my life as a, when I started off as a business owner, I've been an entrepreneur for over two decades. When I first started off, uh, things were going okay in the beginning. I had a small computer company, but after a couple of years, there became a struggle in the sense that things weren't so easy now. I was struggling to find clients. My, at the time, my wife was pregnant with our second child. And I remember that my two business partners at the time had cheated on the business and somehow vacuumed a lot of money out of the business. And now I'm over 100,000 in debt. And money that now I owed creditors and I'm, I'm borrowing money on loans and credit cards to make sure we can pay our creditors. It was the lowest point in my life because at that mo at that time, I'm totally stressed out. I'm working all these hours, 18 hours days, 19 hour days, 20 hour days, little sleep and struggling. And as you can imagine, it took a toll on my marriage as well and my health. At one point, I felt like my wife was going to leave me because I was hardly at home because I was just working in this small business. Well, cut a long story short, one evening I had a breakdown driving home from work um, from my office. And I remember sitting there and uh, I stopped at this shopping center car park, parking lot. I had uh, my hands on a wheel sitting there stationary, going through this breakdown thinking, what a failure I am. How did I get here where I'm not enjoying my life, I'm not enjoying uh, my circumstances, uh, my business is failing, everything 
it, it's bad. It's not, it's not good at all. And how did I get here? I'm not a bad person, but how did I get here where nothing seems to be going well? And I remember that evening, the thoughts that went through my head was, how do successful business owners do business? How do they be, create these great successes in their business? How do they create wealth? How do they create more income? And I realized God, I've got to learn this. So I started going to workshops and seminars and reading books on business uh, and uh, sales and marketing. And within two years, less than two years, I was able to fix that small computer business. And then I sold that business. When I sold that business, I had some time in my hands and I started, people started asking me for help in their business. And so I started, I didn't know I was coaching then, but I was, I was helping them, supporting them. And then I realized there was a, something called coaching. And so I started, I set up a coaching company. And then in London, I would, I would um, invite. we've lost Mac again. I think he's just dropped off. I suddenly realized the screen is no longer there. We're clearly having some tech issues with, with Mac, uh, Mac's connection today. Um, so picking up on what he was just saying about attracting clients and who do you want to work with? So maybe picking up where we were just now, the thoughts you were having about um, who might you want to work with? Think about your, um, if you're going to describe a high, a high paying client, obviously the word high paying, that's going to be different for each person as well, because um, whether you're pricing in hundreds or thousands or sterling or dollars or whatever your price points are, the idea of a, it's, the, it's the clients who are at the higher end of your client bracket, whatever that price range is for you. Ah, we've got a Mac back. <laughs> Welcome yeah, back. I am back. I'm back. Nikki, thanks for holding the faults. And You're um, welcome. Zoom welcome. will do what it does, but <laughs> we will continue as always. So thank you for holding the fault. And um, I realized, thank you, what I was saying, I realized I had to change. So I started helping people and I started running these workshops, um, five in a room, 10 in a room. Then it became 100, then it became 1,000, sometimes 2,000 in a room that I'm helping to teach. And so let me get through... So the reason why I teach other people uh, and coaches and consultants and small business owners is to help them to really create the lifestyle that they want, to help them to make money in their business so they're not constantly stressed about the money side of things. And um, so I want to go through these models that I talked about and then do some Q&A question and answers as well. So one of the models, one of the processes that we teach is called the trifactor model and the trifactor model is all about attracting the right type of clients for you and also once you've attracted them how are you going to persuade them to buy from you so which is going to lead to the set authentic sales model which i'm going to go through in a moment so let's talk about trifactor now there are three parts if you want to make sure you authentically attract and close the uh, a flood of high paying clients You've got to understand that the first part is this. In the marketplace that you are in, there are a group of people who have a problem. So the first P is problem. Now, they have a problem, and you've got to identify what that problem is. And for some of you, you may identify, you know, I've worked with coaches. Some people has established that um, the problem is that uh, – People in middle age find it hard to start a business or find it hard to um, grow in their career ladder. Some people coach people who they've identified the problem is that, and there's one particular one who likes to coach fathers, dads on becoming better parent, a better, a better parent. So what is the problem in the marketplace that you can see? Because the, if you can find and establish the problem, now you can build a business around it. So, for example, for a lot of our clients um, that we work with, the problem is they're not generating enough cash flow through their business. They're not having enough sales coming in. And so month after month after month becomes uh, a panic. Right. So that's the problem. So what is the problem that you've identified? The second thing is the people. 
So first, number one, problem. Number two is people. Which group of people have this problem? So which group of people have this problem? And so I mentioned some people work with uh, mothers, some people work with uh, dads, some people work with small businesses, some people work with coaches, some people work intentionally with youths and, and uh, young people. But when I say people, it's a case of now identifying what they call in marketing terms, your niche. What's the niche that you are going to tap into and be known as the expert, if you like, or the go-to coach for this group of people? Number three is once you've identified the problem and the people who have the problem, number three is now to design a product. And for coaches and co consultants, when I say a product, it's more around creating the right coaching package, the right service, the right program, the right workshop, the right training. So let's call it product. And so where most people go wrong is that they create the product and then they try and sell that product to whoever or whomever. But what I say is this, don't do that. First of all, and if you've created a product or a program already, then you've got to then say, okay, does this product fit this group of people who have this problem? You see where I'm going with this? Does the program I have fit the people, the niche that is, who have this problem and will this product help them to alleviate their problem? So it's important that if you've already got a program and it doesn't address, doesn't answer their underlying problem, you may have to tweak it, you may have to change it slightly so it answers that. Now, part of the trifactor, there's two other areas that I talk about is this. Number four is, are we selling that product at the right price for this group of people? So for example, there are programs that we have that when we, depending on which region we're selling this program, if it's not priced correctly, nobody buy, people don't buy. So sometimes it's underpriced, sometimes it's overpriced depending on the region. For example, clients that we have in Dubai, they want to buy the best of the best of the best. So we, we sell to them the highest packages we have because that is, because if it's priced too cheaply in their eyes, the perception is it's not good enough. It's the quality is not that great. So we give them the highest package we have at the highest price we have and knowing that they can afford it because that's what they're looking for. Now there's other regions uh, around the world we sell other packages and maybe lower price packages whereby people can then get into our marketing funnel, our system, and we can continue educating them and helping them to move forward. So let me recap very, very quickly. We talked about number one, the problem. What is the problem? Now, which group of people or niche have this problem? That's number two. Number three, what product or program or workshop are we going to give to this group of people which alleviates or deals with the problem that they have? Maybe the problem that they have is lack of sleep and you're a good stress coach or burnout coach. Maybe the problem that they have is that they are not able to grow their career. Maybe the problem that they have is that they can't get into physical shape, whatever it is. So a number, and, and the fourth point was the price, pricing it accordingly. And most, a lot of coaches at the beginning struggle with identifying the right price to charge. And so in terms of price, there are three areas that you may want to consider if you're struggling with price. Number one, in terms of pricing is you can price according to the market, whatever the market is changing, charging for your niche, for that group of people, and they're used to uh, paying, you can charge. So you may have to do some research on that. The second way to price is decide that you are going to be a premium product. You're going to charge a premium price because of what you've uh, learned, what you know, the quality of your program, of your product, or your coaching, or where you where your experience has been. So you're going to charge a premium product. 
The other way to price is to charge below the market. Now, I highly recommend you don't do that unless you're just trying to test what people, where the price point is going to be right for you. But if you know what the market rate is, charge according to that. And if you're charging below the market, then no, utilize that as maybe as a loss leader to get people into your, into your coaching programs and then raise your price later on. There's a number, number five, the number five point I want to talk about is this, and I call this platform, platform. Now, platform in marketing terms means channel or distribution or place. So platform simply means now we know this group, we know we can identify, we can, we can, we've really mapped out. And I know Nikki started talking about this as well. The group of people, the niche that you want to work with, but can you describe them as best as you can? So for example, if you thought, thought of one person who has this problem and who has the money to buy, pay you, how would you describe them? Take a moment to think about that. Who, who would be an ideal client for you? That if you remember, if you're speaking to the right type of person, right prospect, ideal client, they have the money to pay you as well as they value the program you have and they, and they want to work with you. Who would that be? How would you describe them? Is it a man? Is it a woman? What's the age of this person? Where do they work? What's their position? Where are they located? What's their educational background? Do, have, do they have a degree, no degree? College educated, high school educated? What do they like doing in their spare time? Do they play golf, tennis? Do they like swimming, walking? Do they like spending time with their children? Do they have children, no children? Describe this person the best you can because in doing so and understanding the problem that they are going through, it becomes easier to market it to them. And that leads me to the number five point I wanna talk about, which is the platform. There are many, many gurus out there. Every single, every single week, you'll hear a new concept, a new way of doing things. Some will say, hey, you want to promote on Instagram or Facebook or do it this way or do it that way on LinkedIn. What I advise our clients is this. How do you know which platform is best for you? Don't forget, before social media, for those who have been coaching as long as I have, before social media, what did we have? You had the yellow pages you could advertise on. You could advertise on, you, you, you could do door to door, you could do cold calling, you could buy lists. So social media is one, only one aspect of maybe your, your, your marketing or your promotion. So when I say platform, I, once you've identified who this ideal client is, that will then determine which platform or which channel you're going to use to attract them okay now are there what i want to say is this someone recap in the chat for me in terms of the five areas i've mentioned which one's the most important for you in this trifactor model i talked about uh, and which one are you working on which one do you need to spend some time on is it the identifying the problem that your ideal clients have is it the, the, um, the product? Is it the niche, the people that you um, need to identify your ideal client that you want to work with? Is it the product? Okay, we're getting the people. Okay, so Rosaline says it's identifying the niche, it's the people. Is it the, setting the right price? Is it identifying the right platform? Okay, so we've had a couple of people, a uh, few people. What is it for you? Or is it neither and everything's working swimmingly? Okay. Uh, uh, David says price. Thank you, David. Um, I think I need to focus more on narrowing down. Okay, good. So for some people, it's narrowing down on the niche. And so let me give you, let me give you, right? Let me give you right now, before I go into the sales, 
um, because the majority said people. So I'm gonna give you a model that you can use to narrow down on your ideal type of client or your niche. I'm gonna give you that now. If I had my slides, it'd be more wonderful, but I'm gonna give it to you right now. I teach all this in my business bootcamp and my business bootcamp, I run four times a year. I go deep into all these areas. So most people said people, which is niche. Some people said price and program and all that. I teach people and, and, and I've got models and strategies for all of that. But for, 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 the, for the niche, I teach something called the five levels deep niche, five levels deep niche, which allows you to really get clear on, who, on, on the niche that you're really going after. I'll give you an example. When lots of gurus and marketing gurus, great people talk about niche, most people get lost and they say, okay, the niche I'm gonna go for, uh, let's, uh, let me give you an example. Some, one of, some of you are, maybe you're a great coach, you're a great coach already, trying to uh, sort out your marketing. You know you've got to niche because if you can really niche down and market to that niche, you are now going to be seen as the expert or the authority in that space. And when you are seen as the authority in that space, you actually attract a lot more clients, not less. So this is what this is all part of what I talk about be, being your authentic self when it comes to marketing and sales. Because you're talking to a group of people, you understand, they understand you, and you're giving them exactly what they need. In that moment, write this down if you can, you become their trusted advisor. You become their trusted advisor in regards to the particular problem that they're going through. So here's the five levels deep. So imagine you went on one of these gurus marketing workshops and you decided your niche is lawyers. You're gonna work with lawyers, lawyers in America, attorneys, right? And so that's only what I call level one. If you dig down deeper, what, what, how could you identify a different type of lawyer? So are there commercial lawyers, immigration lawyers? Um, are there licensing lawyers? There are so many. So you could niche down and say, okay, I wanna work with commercial lawyers. Now that is two levels deep, that's level two. Let's niche down even more and say, okay, what other type of lawyers are there? There are commercial lawyers, so maybe we can look at location and say, the niche that I'm gonna really focus on marketing to are commercial lawyers based in Yorkshire. Commercial lawyers based in Yorkshire. Okay, good. So now I know that commercial lawyers based in Yorkshire, I can, I can pick up, I can go into Google, I can identify easily who they are. I can then write to them. I can run a workshop and invite them, right? but that's only three levels deep. Let's go down deeper. What other, how, how else can we de um, uh, really narrow niche? Commercial lawyers based in Yorkshire. It could be commercial lawyers based in Yorkshire with families. So I'm going to go after a commercial lawyer based in Yorkshire who has a family. In other words, they have a family, they have children and it could be, I, I could go down even deeper. I could, I could go down even deeper and say commercial lawyers based in Yorkshire with a family who play golf, right? So, so now that niche says, okay, maybe because I, I like golf, there'll be other commercial lawyers who like golf. Now, what does that tell me? If I go five levels deep and I'm after commercial lawyers based in Yorkshire who play golf with a family, who have a family, I can advertise in golf magazines, golf websites, golfing blogs. I could, I could do my marketing in those uh, Facebook groups that these people are in. And when I go to do my Facebook marketing, my Facebook advertising, there are various filters that it asks me to select and I can select according to my niche. 
Does this make sense to anyone, by the way? Does this make sense? I know I don't have my slides here because of the way Zoom kicked me out, but if this is making sense, give me a yes if it's making sense. There will be Q&A very shortly as well. Give me a yes if this is making sense. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Asta. Thank you, David. Thank you, Sonia, uh, Ross, uh, Colette, Christina. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Appreciate your feedback, Fu Young. Uh, thank you, Gita, uh, Anna Marie, Raymond. Thank you, thank you, thank you. T uh, Nick Turley, thank you. But then I realize I'm not talking to myself. We are in this conversation. So thank you, Zora, and I really appreciate that. So let me take it into, now we've attracted them. Nadia, I, I appreciate that. Now we've attracted the right people because we've spent time on this marketing strategy, really understanding them and then going after them. Once they're in front, of, uh, in front of us, we have to have the ability to sell and sell authentically. So I'm going to go through our six step process that we teach our clients at my business bootcamp. And this six step sales process, when you discover it, when you learn it and you start utilizing it, it actually makes selling more enjoyable, makes it much, much easier. Okay, thank you. The, try, thank you, Nikki. The, um, it makes it much, much easier. So I'm gonna go through these six steps. If you want to sell authentically and not be seen as um, a, a sleazy salesperson, slimy salesperson, not that they're bad people, but sometimes, you know what I'm like, you know what it's like. Sometimes someone's trying to sell you something and it just doesn't feel right. And so some people get put off by sales and selling. Some people love selling, some people don't. But what we teach our clients, coaches and consultants and small business owners is this, study this sales process, follow it step by step, and you will start enjoying and actually be more relaxed around sales so you can attract and close more clients. Number one, write this down. Number one, the first thing you want to do is do exactly what I've just said right now, which is number one, identify the ideal clients who have money to pay you, but use the tri-factor model that I gave you earlier on to do that. So the tri-factor model to identify the right clients who are ready to pay you, number one. Number two is this, once you've identified them, the second thing is now you're going to approach and contact them. By that, I mean, you are going to go to the networking club where they may be at, the membership club they may be at, you may find that they are DMing you in your Facebook, on your Instagram, or they are uh, phoning you. Now, if you're a coach and consultant, we know the high ticket sales, high paying clients, we are not going to close by sending them to a website. We have to have a conversation with them. And during that conversation, we have to um, follow a process in a way that by the end of the conversation, whether it's your discovery call, whether it's your strategy, strategy session, that they are ready to transfer money to you and buy from you. And that's not gonna be happening by just um, by them seeing you on Facebook, you have to have a conversation. So this approach and contact stage, number two stage is focus and time, spend your time just asking them questions. Once they are on the phone or on Zoom or in front of you, ask them questions. Ask questions about them, ask questions about their background, ask questions about some of their challenges in their life, in their business. And this is not an interrogation, but rather a fact-finding mission because you want to really identify whether they have the problem that your product or your programs or your coaching addresses whether it's the ideal person for you to be talking to and whether they have the money to pay you, right? So your, your, your thing is to ask questions and listen and listen and listen. And as you continue listening and asking questions, at some point, you'll now move to stage step number three. And step number three, at some point, because you've been listening and asking questions, they will ask you a question. And that question, will be this. By the way, what do you do? Can you tell me more about what you do? 
Now, if you have someone who says that to you, hey, by the way, what do you do? Can you tell me more about what you do? Now, isn't that a great place? This is a place where they've invited you in to help them. So now it's not even being worried about selling. It's they've invited you in to talk to them about what you have, your program, your coaching. And in that moment, some people struggle as to what to say. To say. You've got to be so clear. And actually, Nikki, um, if somebody, if we've got mute access, I want to give, do some coaching live on, on, on screen right now. And if we've got mute access, who'd like me to, when someone says, what do you do? Some people get stuck and they don't know what to say. And they'll go all around the house. Who'd like to um, tell me what they do? If you'd like to spend a few if minutes you, on that. If everybody uses, if you wiggle your cursor around, you'll see that you've got reactions. And on the reactions button, there's a raise hand. So if you want to put your hand up and then you can unmute yourself, we'll know that. Oh, Julie's waving at us on the screen. In that case, Julie, Excellent. first served. Yay, and, uh, me. I'm going to Have we got Julie on video or not? I'm going to see if I can join, join spot. If not, right. don't worry. Go. Julie, how are you doing? Hello, really well. Can you hear me? I can, Julie. Fantastic. Good to see you, Julie Jones. Julie, are, you're okay for me to give a little bit of coaching. Is that okay? Superb, because we this is International Coaching Week, and that's what we do as coaches, right, Co right, Julie? Whoop, whoop. <laughs> okay, Julie, so let's get straight into it. Julie, um, so imagine, if you've been listening to everything I've been saying, you're speaking to that client, you've asked them all these questions, now, they, and now they've been listening to you, and they say, hey, Julie, by the way, what do you do? And literally, what do you, what do you say? Go ahead. So um, I had this happen to me this this just this week, actually. So that's why I think I put my hand up. Um, yeah, she asked me. So I'd been listening to her. Um, she wanted me to come and do a well-being day um, with um, people at the Citizens Advice Bureau. Uh, and we were talking about um, yoga and sort of coaching and helping people. So, uh, so so Julie, already, I was already off. Moment. Look at me, blah blah blah. Exactly. So this is yes. this is the this is the money moment. You yes, spent time asking. So and now they said, "Hey, they've invited you." Hey, Julie, uh, it is Julie, right? Julie, what do you do again? And now you've got to tell them, and so they are oh. clear, ready, and go. Okay. So um, I um, can come to your um, uh, well-being day. Um, I can. Do some mindful meditation to get your your um, participants into a quiet space um, where they can engage with their bodies again. I can then uh, uh, work with them um, around the chair. All right. chair so, so Julie, so, yeah. you're doing awesome. Julie, you're doing well. Hey, Thank by you. the way, <laughs> this is not easy to do, but I want to help Julie. So everybody, give Julie a big round of applause for now. Just give her a hand. Because what we know, it takes courage to jump on front of the video and start talking. It takes courage. So, Julie, I want to help you very, very brief. So, Julie, I have a process I teach in my business boot camp, which, um, which helps people to really know what to say and how to say it very, very quickly so they don't waffle and go around the houses. So yeah. let me help you with that. Julie, how long, have you, how long have you been doing what you've been doing as a coach? Oh, as a coach? um about two and a half years okay so in those two and a half years how many people would you say that you've worked with or helped or supported oh gosh um maybe two or three hundred something like that three hundred go through or three hundred right and so these two, these, so is it 200? Is it 300? Which one would you say? Uh, go for go for 250 because that's in the middle. <laughs> right, 250. As long as it's honest, it's fine. So yeah. for the past two and a half years, you've, you've helped over 250 people. And what's the kind of results they've got? What, what have they got from, you know, being oh. in your environment, you helping them? Um, so people say that um, they found um, calm, um, they, they find they've got less stress, um, that, um, uh, that they found more joy in their lives, um, and that- So they become less stressful and they yes. found more joy in their life, right? Yes, yes. Excellent, I love that. That's a, 
and they have more energy, right? So what yes, I want you to do, yeah. so what I want you to do now, Julie, yeah. is I want you to put it all together and because you said it, you said for the past two, so you tell me, so you say for the past two and a half years, you've done what? Yeah. So say, for you say, two, yeah, for the past two and a half years, I have helped 250 approximately people um, find less stress in their lives, more joy and, and greater energy. There you go. That's all, <laughs> that's all they're looking for. <laughs> so, you, so, so now you can use that. Instead yeah. of going, I can come and I can do the, yeah, right? Well. <laughs> right. Now, I want you to say the same thing again mm -hmm. with certainty because you have done it you own it i want you to say the same thing again with certainty with a smile on your face and then imagine i am a client ask me a question at the end ask me an open uh, a closing question is this something that you would want would you yeah, like me yeah. to come and help you ask me a question okay. are you ready um, so give her a yes. hand wherever you are give her a hand <laughs> are you ready go, julie go, go, go. yes ready and go so, um, yes, I have spent the last two and a half years helping 250 plus clients um, find joy, energy and less stress in their lives. Is that something I could help your clients with? Right. How does that sound now to you, Julie? That sounds like, wow, ting. <laughs> there you go. Because now you, Asta says, wow, give her a hand, give her a hand, give her a hand. Julie, I want to say thank you for your courage. Because how long did it take me to coach you to say the right words? Uh, oh, I don't know. I think it was at least four minutes. <laughs> right. Three or four minutes. That's it. You know, yeah. and, and, and what, if, what would life be like if you started using that? And also this whole process that I've been um, talking about, the trifactor model, as well as I'm going to continue just going through some of the um, fi finalizing some of the sales process there and every single element. There are things you need to practice, get your mind around. Once you practice it and now you're in front of the client, it becomes a lot easier. What I've just given you there, people pay me thousands for just to help them to structure that. You did it in a few seconds. So I'm proud of you. Well done. Well done. Thank you so much. All right, Nikki. Thanks, Julie. Catch up next time. <laughs> well done, Julie. So once we've... Um, that once we've done stage number three, which we call your, we call that your pitch. So the moment they say, what do you do? You go into step number three, which is your pitch. And Julie's pitch, Julie Jones' pitch was for two and a half years, I've been, I've worked with over 250 people, helping them to become more relaxed, to find more joy in their life and just have more happiness. Is that something I can help you with? That's a, that's a pitch. My pitch is for the, what, what do I say? Now, you heard me say this at the beginning of the, our conversation. For, I, for 18 years, I trained, I've trained and coached hundreds of thousands of people in over 50 countries to grow their business anywhere, you know, grow their business, sometimes doubling it, their business in less than one year. Now, hopefully I can do, help you do that. Okay, so that, that's your pitch. Now you've delivered your pitch. And you've done, you go furthermore into the presentation. You're going to get up to a place where you are now that you are going to close them. You're going to close them into buying from you. Now, when you attempt to close, that's step number four. The, the, what's going to happen is they're either going to say no or they're going to say yes. And from a sales perspective, no is not always a no. No is sounds sometimes sounds like this. Tell me if you've heard this before. Oh, I can't afford it. It's oh, it's too expensive. Um, oh, can you send me an email about that? Or oh, can can we can I speak to this person or my spouse or my business partner and come back to you? It's all the yeah, as that's we've all heard it as coaches. These these are what we call objections. And one thing I some, some one of the things I teach is how do you turn that situation around when someone says no? How do you turn that into a yes? Especially when you know they have the problem, they need your service. How do you turn that no into a yes? Now, 
I could bring someone else up on the screen. I can teach all that, but we don't have much time. And I'm looking at the clock. We're going to run out of time, but hopefully it's making sense. But in my business boot camp, I teach. And if you get a chance to go, then, you know, go and check it out. But I go deep into all these marketing and sales areas so that you start making a lot more money as a coach. So step number five is turning their nose into a yes. And then step number six, finally, is now you've turned it into a yes and that you've asked for the money and they're paying you. Step number six is now within a few weeks, a few months, depending on what you are selling, go back to them and do a follow-up. So step number six is a follow-up. A follow-up simply means that you are going to check in to see if what they bought, they are happy with. You are going to check in to see if there are any issues, any challenges after they've finished the coaching with you clearly, or after they finish buying your program. And what you're listening for is if something didn't go right, it gives you the opportunity to fix that. But if things went really well and you can hear their results, and by the way, if I had my slide, you'll see lots of different case studies, lots of different, um, so if, lots of different uh, success stories where people grew their businesses from between 20% 200% to 200% in less than a year, double their business created. So I had lots of videos, lots of case studies on that, but hey, this is Zoom. So I want to finish up on that. And it just dawned on me, um, Julie really enjoyed that. If anyone else feels like, um, if you feel like you like to get deeper into this and you really want to grow your business, then there is a website you can check out um, where, where I, 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 I talk about my business bootcamp and it's simply babnown.com. If it's, if it's of interest to you, great, babnown.com. Um, that's bra bravo, alpha, bravo, November, Oscar whiskey.com. And it talks about the boot camp and all the things that I teach on there to help you. B A B. Oh, you got it there, Nick. Oh, Nikki, you are so smart. There you go. And by the way, for the IAC PCNM, you know, Dawn and what Nikki are doing and Rhea and, and David, what I decided instead of the normal price we were charging, which is like $1,997 for a three day program, for the IAPCNM, members and people viewing here it'll only be 10 percent of that so 10 percent of that 197 pounds which is about 250 dollars about three days really getting deep into your sales and marketing so you can make a lot more money knowing what to say how to say it how to handle all objections and make more money that's essentially why we're here if it's for you great if it's not for you that's okay uh, if you need to reach me uh, just go to my website Um, there are um there are links there, you can reach me. There's free resources there as well. So I, I look forward for our paths to cross again in the future. All right, bye for now. So Nikki, actually I can answer some questions now, Nikki. Any questions, any questions you have now about anything I've said, I've spoken about, then please, please, please um, put your, put, raise your virtual hand and we can answer that question. I can answer that question for you in relation to either business, coaching practice, um, marketing, sales, certainly raise your hand and I can answer that question for you. It's been so useful. I've written so many notes for myself as well. Even though I've been doing this for 14 years, there all, there's always something new. Um, so if you, if you haven't got a microphone that you can unmute, if you want to use the chat box and type a question in there, if you want to ask your question live on the recording, if you use the raise hand button, um, then we can come to you in turn. If you use the raise hand, if you can't find that button on your menu bar, just wave at the screen so we can see you. Um, this is your chance. Um, we, we, when we leave here in a few minutes time, you will have lost that opportunity to have your burning question answered so if you've got a burning question right now on how you're going to put all this into practice when you leave the session um now is your opportunity to ask mac while you've got him live and in front of you so take this opportunity i know a couple of people have got to drop off we're going to wrap things up in a couple of minutes sure so be thinking about what are you taking away out of all the fantastic stuff mac has shared what are you going to take away from here? Gita, what would you like to ask? If you want to use the unmute button and ask your question, 
welcome. So, hi, Mark. So, um, hey. quick question on uh, what is is really required to, I see bonus sessions, free sessions to kind of, uh, as part of the sales strategy, what is the value and is it really required to go that route? So are you talking about in your when you're giving free sessions and free um, value? Is that right? That's right. Okay, yeah. So the mis biggest mistake most coaches make is they give a lot of free stuff. They give their free time. They do free discovery calls or free webinars or free this and free that. That's a great marketing strategy. But you have to know how to turn that into paying clients. Because at any given time, when you give these things for free, at some point, you now need to make an offer. You need to go to them and say, hey, by the way, I know you're interested in this. I know you have this problem. I have this for you. All right. And so whenever you make an offer, probably one or two percent are in the market ready to buy from you. Um, but the others, the other 99 percent or 98, you've got to keep them in what we call a nurturing sequence. So either get them into a group or they are on your email and continue educating them and giving them value. So the strategy behind free is going back and converting them into paying clients on a consistent basis. Does that make sense? Makes perfect thing. sense. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you for your question. Great question, by the way. We've we've only got a couple of minutes left, so I've just typed a quick answer to Laura's question, which she was saying, if you haven't got an impressive huge number of in 14 years, I've coached over a thousand people across six continents, which is sure. what it would be. Um, if you've only been doing this a couple of months, then just take the numbers out, I guess. So so your sentence still yeah, works. No, well, no, yeah, no, that's one way, but we in my boot camp, there is another way we do that because what, what I teach in my boot camp, I, I, I ask you to go into the credibility of your history because some of you have been working for, yeah, so maybe you've been an accountant for 20 years. That's credibility. Maybe you uh, was a pharmacist for 10 years. That's credibility. So whatever you've done in the past, you've got to bring that into your pitch, right? So if, if you've only been doing this for a few months, you've got to borrow the credibility of your background and there's a process that I teach around that so now you feel more confident when you are speaking in front of a new prospect or a new client because it's about the numbers the history the credibility the story it's all there's a whole thing that goes with it so I would say don't take anything out but add the things that add value and build credibility in their mind Nikki fantastic brilliant answer thank you so much and thank you for the question Laura I would love thank you, to Laura. start with Sit, sit and chat with you for hours unfortunately we have come to the end of this session and we have to wrap up because we've got more more fantastic things coming later in the day um so firstly thank you so much matt it has been a pleasure and well done for overcoming the zoom challenges as you say the show carries on we will carry on regardless um zoom might uh, conspire against us for plan a but we always have a plan b so so thank Absolutely. you for for persevering with the technical thing and thank you everyone who has stayed with us live um, for your patience around the tech things um for just for the last minute before we wrap up um this is all part of your continuous professional development and we know what it's like we will have the best of intentions that we're going to remember what we've heard and we'll make a note of it later and we'll do all sorts of things i'm going to invite you all now just for a minute to spend a moment reflecting on everything that you've heard Make a note, whether it's in your CPD log or in your notes here. If you haven't got a CPD log, you can download a template from the IAPCNM members area. It was part of your CPD recording. Um, make a note now. What is the what are the things that you are taking away from this session that are going to be particularly valuable for you today? What are you going to do differently? Or what are you going to do more of or less of or keep doing or start or stop as a result of this session? So what are you taking away that you want to make sure you remember? And what are you going to do and to put it into practice? And of course, if you miss any of the sessions or you want to go back and recap everything um, the, in the members area, you've got lifetime access to the recordings for, for this International Coaching Week and, and last year. So you can go back and watch the recordings. They'll be up in the next few days once they've been edited and uploaded. So you can go back and recap. But for now, 
capturing the, the key things that you want to make a note of. So make sure you've jotted down something or highlighted what are your takeaways? What are the things that are going to particularly serve you well? It has been an absolute joy to spend time with Mac. It is always a pleasure. I always get excited when I get to host Mac's um, sessions with us. Um, looking ahead to later today, we've got Eileen at, these are all UK time. So in an hour's time, we're going to have Eileen here. And uh, Eileen's session, if I just remind myself the titles. Oh, yes, don't let the ego win. So I will be back with you in an hour's time to host Eileen. Don't let the ego win. Think about the holistic, she's a holistic mindset coach. So we'll be thinking about how the ego features in our coaching sessions. And then we've got Shri at 3.30 UK. Um, so Shri will be talking about enhancing the process of mentoring through Indic wisdom. So that's going to be a fascinating session. And then we wrap up the day with Laura Berman Faulkner. And L Laura is going to be with us talking about how to turn selling into a service so that more people say yes. So it's a really good complement to what Mac has been sharing with us this morning. We're going to be picking up the selling subject again as we end the day. So it's topping and tailing the day with sales. So I look forward to seeing you at one of the sessions later on today. I think um, uh, the, the fantastic Ruby, I think is hosting Shri's session at 3.30, but I will see you at 12.30 and 5.30. Make sure you've saved your notes, make sure that you have got everything that you need from this session. I wish you a fantastic rest of the day um, and I will see some of you back here in an hour's time. Thank you very much.